Um, I was born in a village called Clare Castle in County Clare, um, just a couple of miles down the road from Innes. Um, my, my dad, God be good to him, um, was a fantastic goalkeeper for Clare Castle and Clare. He actually played minor for Clare in 58, 59 and 60, three years in a row. Um, I think Davy Fitz is probably the only other goalkeeper to have played three years. Maybe there was another young lad, Young O'Hara from Tulla, but, um, so which meant he played at 15. So I grew up in a home where we were steeped in hurling, really. Um, and, and, and actually, I learned to hurl um, in a place called the Key Road in Clare Castle. It was my, my grandmother's home house, and there was a big wall called Sutton's Wall just below her house. And um, I spent the longest hours there, either with my dad when he got a chance or by myself hitting the ball off the wall. And I very quickly learned that um, I had a good eye for a ball. I saw it coming back off the wall quickly. So I suppose that's when I realised that I might be a half decent goalkeeper. So, yeah, I mean, I can remember. Um, from a very early age, going to county finals in Clare, um, I can remember 1972-73. I can remember being at the Galway and Tipperary National League final in 70, was it 74, 75, the first one Galway won. I can remember being at that match with my dad and John Casey. He'd be the John Casey Jr.'s father, Skinny's father. Um, my, my dad went to a lot of matches with him. So I can remember my first inter-county match that I can really remember was Galway and Tip in the league final. So yeah, I was brought up in a home steeped in hurling. My mother's family then would be the Crows from Dicer to Wen and um, my grandfather, Pag, I'd be good to him, was an absolute obsessive GA man and my uncle Des is the next chairman of the Clare County Board or secretary of the Clare County Board. So yeah, there'd be an old hurling background there, sport background there already. Yeah. From an early age, I suppose, um, I, I, think, I think goalkeepers and good, decent goalkeepers and yeah, let's be honest, I was a very good goalkeeper, um, are, are born, not made. Um, you, you, you can't really make a goalkeeper out of a non-goalkeeper. And from a very early stage, everyone says, she's your man has a great eye for the ball. What did that mean? I could see the ball coming off the hurley early and I could stop the ball. I had a very, very, very good eye to stop the ball. And I suppose every chance I got, I wanted to be in goal and I wanted to be diving around. And it didn't always go down great with my mother. I got in home with the knees and my pants covered in green grass that she took hours to get off with a scrubbing brush or something. But... Um, yeah, I just always loved playing in goal, and uh, all my heroes like, um, you know, Noel Skehan, Seamus Jurek, um, Ray Clements, the ex Liverpool soccer goalkeeper, my all time hero. So everyone, like, I'm mad about Buffon now. I mean, then I kind of, as I got older, sure, even though I was in competition with him, I rated Davy. Davy was a fantastic goalkeeper. Damien Fitzhenry, you know, those guys, but him. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so from an early stage, all right, everyone kind of said, yeah, this guy, this guy has great potential, has great ability. And I always found I was playing on teams. Like I, I played senior for Clare Castle. I played my first adult match in 1983 against Whitegate. And would you believe I played a challenge match with the Tommy Larkin's junior hurling team against Whitegate last Saturday evening at 51. So I'm still going. But I was always... Yeah, I think the people in Clare Castle that knew about hurling, the John Hanley's and the Michael Slattery's and the Sean Keane's and Bernie Ryan's and those guys always saw that this guy has ability and Jack Maloney, obviously, when he was, took over the senior team. And yeah, yeah, from an early stage, you could see I was going to be a good goalkeeper, yeah. Obviously, I played with Clare Castle under 12, under 14. Um, I went into St. Flannan's College, played under 15, Dean Ryan and Harty Cup with St. Flannan's. Um, never had that massive love for the college's hurling like a lot have. You know, it was a big, huge thing in Clare to play with St. Flannan's and play Harty. I played, but it never, never really did it for me, I must say now. Enjoyed playing it and that, but I think my last year I didn't bother playing Harty. But um, that was just me. Other lads would die for it. Um, but I loved, I loved playing for the club. I loved, I mean, like, I wouldn't have to be asked twice whether it was a, an under 12 B match or a senior championship match at the time with Clare Castle, we had our differences after, but I loved, I, I suppose, it didn't matter to me whether I was playing for Clare or the Iranian Embassy. Once I was hurling and once I was in goal, I loved hurling. And it didn't matter who I played for, really. I just loved playing. And that, that to this day, that's the case. I get, you know, I've had my issues in life with, with alcohol and, and, and I suppose, at times not feeling great about myself, but the only time I've ever in my life felt 100% comfortable in my own skin is when I'm standing inside in the goal. And that's as late as last Saturday evening or from the first day. I mean, I remember in 93, we won an All-Ireland with Clare, a junior All-Ireland in Crow Park. And I, it was the curtain raiser to a Leinster final. 45, 50,000 at it. 
I was inside in Gaul that day, so comfortable in my own skin because I knew it was the one place in my life I was damn good at it. There was very few better, and I knew it was just me. And it, it might sound so weird from a, an adult of 51 to be saying that, but just I just always felt so comfortable inside in that goal. It was my little home. And that's why I have such an obsession even with coaching goalkeepers. And I mean, if you go down to my house, there's a picture of Hope Solo, the, um, the, 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 the American national soccer goalkeeper, a big, big picture of her on the wall, goalkeeper again. Just something about it. It kind of has probably has defined my life, really. Like the corner forward can make a mistake or the the wing forward or the midfielder or the wing back or the corner back and the goalkeeper makes a mistake, you're in it on your own, you know. And and it's the one thing I, I, I try to drill into the the goalkeepers I coach that, you know, I, first of all, I've never criticised the goalkeeper I work with because um, there's plenty of people that do that for us. I think yeah, yeah, if, if, if you're not made feel good about yourself in there anyway, you're at nothing and, and every coach unfortunately isn't isn't good at that or every manager isn't good at that or every mentor but um you know i i i i, I, I work with um, there's one I, i'm involved with the wexford under 20s as well at the minute and and young james lawler he, he was the goalkeeper last year and like he's a terrific young fella now absolute you will not meet a nicer young fella if if, if, if you check ireland and what well, he got he got hit for eight goals in a an all ireland under 21 semi-final last year against tip None of them his fault, but after that match, you know, I, I, I kind of, I, I, and this might explain about the last man standing bit, I kind of said to him, you know, James, I said, you, you, any one of us that were at the match, and there was probably five or 6,000 people at the match, could have let in the eight goals, you know, but one or two of the saves you made, you're probably the only one that could have made them, you know, and everyone doesn't look at it that way with the goalkeeper, it would be, oh, Jesus, eight goals went in, who was in goal? But there's nothing about the 14 lads outside, you know. So even, yeah, you are the last man standing, but, and, and yeah, you're the first guy that's going to be blamed and the last guy that's going to get credit, but um, I suppose, you know, you love the position, you'll, you'll put up with all that too, won't you, really? My ambitions in hurling, um, I, I, I used to, as a young lad, go to watch my father playing and he was, a, oh, he was a serious goalkeeper, this guy now. He was an absolute brilliant goalkeeper and he was so unorthodox, he was told the hurley with the boss pointing towards the ground, you know, but he, he was pushing on a bit as I got to see him. He was just maybe playing a bit of junior, the odd senior match. Um, but I suppose to be, to be, to be him, to be the next Clare Castle goalkeeper, you know, and um, like obviously that would have been the first one to be the Clare Castle goalkeeper. Yeah, to play with St. Flannan's College, even though it didn't mean a whole lot to me, I, I must say. That won't go down well, me saying that, but it didn't. Um, to play for Clare, you know, to play for my county. And thankfully, by hook or by crook, I achieved them all, you know. And um, there's no better feeling, like like sticking on that Clare Castle number one jersey or the Clare number one jersey, you know, when I was lucky enough to get my hands on it, that Davey gave me a chance to be aware at the odd time. But um, to, to wear the Clare jersey or the, the club jersey, they, they were my ambitions, really, you know. And but But really, it was to be... As, as, as good a goalkeeper as my father and because I knew if I was even half as good as him I was going to be a special one and that was it really that was goalkeeping is a different kind of ambition like the goalkeepers I coach um, I, I'd always ask them a couple of questions you know the first one would be um, and I would ask this even to to the Mark Fennings of this world or funny I asked Owen Cahill the Offaly goalkeeper I was working with him three years ago Owen, Owen is, is an exceptionally talented hurler now. But um, James Dempsey retired from the Offaly team a few years ago and Owen was the goalkeeper. But I was with him with the Offaly under 20s. And I remember saying to him one night above a train, and it's the question I ask everybody. I said, Owen, if you're going to be playing in all Ireland final in six months' time, would you rather be in goal or, wing, or playing wing forward? And Owen answered me wing forward. And isn't it funny, this year he's playing outfield for Offaly. Whereas the goalkeepers I'll stay with and stay working with and like, like Owen had the potential, he was in the top five goalkeepers in Ireland, but his love was to play outfield. Whereas the guy that will straight away answer me, I want to be the goalkeeper. He's the guy, because you have to want to play in goal, you know. But, but there are lots that, are, that could play in goal, but want to play outfield, and well, then you just move away from those guys, as regarding a coach anyway, because they'll, they'll, never, they'll never stick it or never love it. But my ambition was always to be a goalkeeper, so... Now I won, I won an under-15 championship out the field actually, for Clare Castle I was the top scorer but I didn't love playing outfield, yeah. I always wanted to get back into goal. It's, it's funny, my, my, my first recollection is seeing Davy playing 
1986, um, we got to the county senior hurling final in Cairn. It was played in Cairn, the home of Michael Cusick, the, the anniversary, even though it was 1984, the county final wasn't played in Cairn until 86. And the minor final was to be the curtain raiser to it, but the minor final was cancelled because I was playing in both. I was playing minor and senior for Clark Castle and we got to both finals. So they played the under 15 final before the senior final. And I remember looking out the door of the dressing room, like at this stage I was 16 and a half, 17, I was going to be the next big thing of a player goalkeeper, playing the senior final, this guy is an exceptional talent, whatever, was what other people would have been saying anyway. But then they look out the door and in the goal for Six Mile Bridge, there was this small little lad inside in goal playing the under 15 final. Because obviously Davy's a couple of years younger than me. It was Davy. And I said it to somebody that day in 1986. I said, this guy is the guy I have to watch out for. I spotted in him. He just controlled two balls. He was only a little, little tot of a guy inside in the goal. But by Jesus, I knew it. I said, this guy is a special, and how right I was. But um, that was my first instance of it. Isn't there some coincidence? Like, I play in a senior final, looking out the door of the dressing room before our match to see the curtain raiser game, bit of it. And I spotted the guy that was to be my, well, well like, he, he has played such a big part in my life now. My God, above in heaven, but Ara, you know, when, when we were in competition for the spot, yeah, um, I broke onto the Clare Castle team. Then there was a void in the Clare team for a few years. I was too young to go in. But then in 89, so I'd started drinking then by 87, Davy got into goal. And I was at nothing then because even though we were possibly, we were the two best goalkeepers in Clare by 100 miles, but he was too good to let in. Like, you can't let in a guy that. And also, as much as ability he had, his work rate and his drive and his commitment and, like, I was at nothing trying to move him. Oh, I wouldn't say that to him now. And I'm admitting for the first time he was, he was one of the best goalkeepers of all time, right? But um, he, he was just, like, obviously when you'd be trying to get it into your own head, I want this guy's place, you wouldn't be letting him know how good you thought he was. But I knew, I knew. I mean, above a trend. And he was exceptional, like. He was exceptional. And well, he's one of the best goalkeepers I've ever played, like, and I loved watching him. He'd be surprised to hear me saying that now because I don't always tell him, but um, I have a fabulous goalkeeper, fabulous goalkeeper, one of the best. He's good at everything he does because he's driven like, I'd say if you were taking that guy on in a game, a game of snap, he'd want to beat you, you know, and that's why he's so good. Like he doesn't, defeat doesn't come into it. And it's funny, uh, when, 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 when um, he contacted me a couple of years ago to know would I be interested in maybe talking to him about getting involved with Wexford as the goalkeeping coach and I kind of said, it's just like, this is, this is big. Because PJ Ryan had been with him and PJ got a job in Kilkenny or something, doing coaching or development officer or something, so they would have, and I asked him, could I have a week or two to think about it because it wasn't that I didn't want to work with Davy. Jesus, sure, is the best honour in the GAA because he's the best manager and his setup is the best and like, it is a privilege to be asked to be part of it. But I suppose it was, could I give it the time? Could I, like I was living in, Port Humna, it's, it's a three and a half hour drive and it's nearly an extra hour from work, you know. So I thought and thought and thought about it, but um, like even, 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 you know, but, but, but when I met him of a Friday night anyway, he was coming home from Wexford Train. I met him in the Obama Plaza in Nina to say, I'd love to give this a shot with you, yeah. It was, it was one o'clock in the morning, like, because he met me on the way home from Nina or from, from Wexford and obviously, I, so he said, be, uh, be in Parnell Park on Sunday, he said, it's our first match. It's the um, Walsh Cup game against uh, Dublin. No, he said, um, I'm not sure, he said, no, he said, what type of team will live out Sunday? But he said, it's only the Walsh Cup anyway, he said, and then, like, you know, we won't take it too serious. I knew by him, I said, they're not for that take a game of snap series. But we got up to the match anyway, and sure, he introduced me to the players, and it was my first, it was a big thing for me, like meeting the Lee Chins and the Conor McDonalds, and obviously now Mark Fanning, I didn't know Mark at the time, and, you know, and all the backroom team, and sure, that they're, you couldn't meet nicer than them, but sure, it was a big thing the first day. But even before the match, actually, it's only the Watch Cup. But anyway, Dublin went ahead by about seven points, and I spotted him walking across the field at half time, and his expression had changed <laughs> when he went into the dressing room. Wexford came out and won the match, and I, I said to someone walking across, I said, "Wait for this." I knew by his face he just he just can't he just can't act being beaten, and that's why he's so good. Like I, I, I you know, sorry now for jumping the subject, but '93 we beat Kilkenny in the Junior All Ireland final, and my hero Noel Skehan was the manager, right? And after the match, he came into the dressing room to congratulate Clare on beating Kilkenny. But you could see he begrudged us winning that. And I don't mean in a personal way. It's just he's a winner all his life. He's nine All-Irelands and losing 
just wasn't in his in his radar at all. And that's you just take I'm talking about two Davy Fitz and Old Skeehan, two of the top five goalkeepers of all time. Why? Bad losers, great winners. You know, just and and, and that's just that's the way they are. What went wrong in my life went wrong February 12 months, it's not last February, the previous February, and I decided how am I going to get through this and I just I'll throw myself into the hurling the best I can anyway. And obviously I was with the Wexford senior team and I have Mark Fanning who, if he's not the best goalkeeper in Ireland, he's in the top three. I think he's the best. Obviously I'd be a bit biased, but, 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 but most people wouldn't argue with me, like it's either him, Stephen O'Keefe or Owen Murphy, you, either of the three, he's mine and he's the one I'm going to go with anyway. Um, like, like he's a fabulous goalkeeper but um, I started working with the Wexford under 20s then and this young James Lawler who I mentioned earlier I, I've become very fond of that lad now wouldn't want to be letting him hear this too much but he, I think he knows it anyway and uh, we have him in the senior panel with us at the moment with Ian and Martin so we have three very good goalkeepers in at the moment in Wexford and they're a dream to work with because they're three nice lads as well but um, so I took young Lawler under my wing I was asked to get involved with Tommy Larkins then at club in Woodford in Galway because I'm living over the road they asked me to coach the team outfield and the man that rang me says didn't know what you're on about is I couldn't coach outfield players but I've mentioned I hadn't been with Owen Cahill with Offaly the year before didn't they play Galway in a Leinster under 21 semi-final and I'd spotted this young lad in goal for Galway a and Murphy club Tommy Larkins so I said to James Rohan when he rang me about Tommy's I said but I'd love to work with your goalkeeper and I said give me a year with that lad I said and he'll play for Galway and then the young lad from Clare contacted me to know would I do a bit of work with him over Quilligan so three different nights over February we'll say 12 months, not last February, the previous February. The three of them came to my house three different nights and we spoke because any goalkeeper I take on board to work with, he gets everything I have. But first of all, the only reason I asked them to come over to the house was for them to show a bit of commitment that they'd come over. Julie, the three of them arrived. So we had our chats and, and I said to the three of them individually, I said, Aina, Aina Murphy is as good a goalkeeper as I've ever coached. Right, he's up there at the Mark Fanning level. Well, maybe not that level yet, but he's going to be there. He, he has the potential to be, he's the best goalkeeper I've seen in Galway since 1974. He's that good. And I told him that. I don't think anyone else had ever told him. Who's but Keneally? Yeah, Keneally, yeah, Keneally. Keneally and John Cummins and those guys were good goalkeepers. Callan, the, the guy that's, I think he's the goalkeeping coach we call him over. They wouldn't lace Murphy's boots as goalkeepers. And I'm publicly saying that. Murphy is the best goalkeeper I've seen in Galway since I started watching Hurling. This guy is special. Trust me on that. Okay, this guy, if it's two years time if we're talking again, he'll be up there as the best with Fanning in Ireland. He's that good. And Galway have never had a goalkeeper like that. And they have another good guy coming up, young Mike Legan in, in Capitagal, but Murphy's a special talent. Murphy can be whatever he wants to be. If Murphy wants to be the best goalkeeper in Ireland or up at that level of the, the top ones, he can be. But um, anyway, the three boys came to the house three different nights. So um, Aina was there and I said, look, I said, if you... Do the bit of training with me, I said, and do what I suggest. I'd never say do what I tell you because anyone that ever told me and then but it suggest is different. I said, you'll play for Galway within 12 months. Kind of doubt it. I said, trust me. Aver Quilligan came over and at that stage, Donald Maloney and Jerry O'Connor were over Clare and they weren't picking him. And I said, well, why don't you ring the boys and ask them? So he rang Donald and Donald said to him, we're not picking you because we feel you have to work at. So I said, no. But I said, your chance will come. I said, because I knew he had the ability and James Lawler was the Wexford under 20s goalkeeper that his whole ambition in life, this fellow like, is to be the Wexford goalkeeper. He'd have to wait a bit now to move anything now to be fair, but he, he will eventually be the, the goalkeeper, you know, and because he wants to be. But so I said to the three of them, I said, within 12 months, you'll play for Wexford, Galway and Clare, if you do what we suggest. The Sunday week before the lockdown, Wexford played Carlo. Lawler was in goal for Wexford. Galway played Cork. Aina was in goal for Cork. And Clare played Dublin. Aver Quilligan was in goal for Clare. Job done. <laughs> I, I, I'd be one of these guys that don't do the goalkeeping coaching for money. Like, I took no money from most of the clubs I was involved with last year. I, I just, small expenses, my, my fuel cover going up and down to Wexford. I don't give a shite about money for it. The best satisfaction was that. Or another one, if you remember last year, the, the league game, Wexford and Kilkenny, was cancelled because of the bad weather. We went over and we did a training session in St. Peter's College after it. And we did a bit of shot stopping. And Mark Fanning made three saves. They were ridiculously good now, right? They were worth every mile and every minute in the car up and down to Wexford. I get more satisfaction than seeing my goalkeepers playing well. Do you think that Sunday that the three boys played county? Sure. What money you'd buy that like? 
Like we went out to Boston last year with the, in the and Anna Martin, my other goalkeeper expert, made a save, twisted his body back the other way. No money will buy that save, like for me. You know, I get massive, 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 massive pleasure out out of that. What money will buy that, like mm. none, you know. And that, that, that's and I think that comes across to the goalkeepers how much I love it. It does, like, because I'd spend the longest time talking about Ray Clements and the saves he makes, or Noel Skeehan, or Davy Fitz's Davy's display against Tipperary. Davy's getting a lot of praise off me today, now he yeah. he'll be shocked. <laughs> but 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 you see, I'd never tell this to Davy. But the day he played against Tip in '99 for Clare below his display, the day he made the great save from Paul Shelley, he's handling that day. Goalkeeping doesn't get much better than that, like. Yeah. He was, I think, he gave more or less the perfect goalkeeping performance that day. There's another performance from a goalkeeper I have to mention though. A club game for Clare Castle, the two best performances I saw, I'm not saying the two best goalkeepers now, they'd be, David would be close, but two best goalkeeping displays I saw was Davies against Wexford or against Tip in 1999. And John Casey, they call him Skinny, came along after me. Now, he was an outfield player that they converted into a goalkeeper, but he was a very, very, very good one. But he gave a display against Newmarket one Saturday evening. Aaron was playing outfield for Clare Castle of controlling a wet ball with his hurley and handling, and I have yet to see anything like it. 